Hi everyone, and welcome to TC Talks, our brand new interview show and a spin-off of the Trust Conference, a global human rights event taking place every November in London. With the Trust Conference on hold because of the coronavirus pandemic, we are using TC Talks to get the speakers from the event to you. So today's topic is data privacy. Throughout this pandemic, we've seen governments turning to apps and other digital technological devices in an effort to try to monitor and curb the spread of the infection. Well, let's bring in Brett Solomon, the executive director and co-founder of Access Now, an international organization defending digital rights around the world. Brett, thank you for joining us. When they told me we were talking at this time in the morning here in London, I thought they got it wrong. You're always in the US, and so I was like, well, definitely the timing must be wrong. I'm just north of Sydney, actually. I'm in a small um, beach town. It's probably the best place in the world to be, actually, considering everything that's going on. So, but let's dig like, right in. I, we're hearing a lot about contact tracing these days, and uh, these apps are being described to us as the tools we absolutely need uh, in the fight against uh, COVID-19. Is contact tracing actually working? What evidence do we have that this is actually working? Yeah, this is really the first question that needs to be asked, and I think in a sense it's probably the last question that's being asked, which is are they effective and are they working? The consequences of these contact tracing apps are so significant now, but also into the future, because we don't know how they're going, that data is going to be used and who's going to have access to it and how long it's going to be stored for, etc. That we've got this like significant human rights concerns that are connected with contact tracing apps, and yet not necessarily the kind of evidence that we need to show that it's a necessary and proportionate infringement on rights. And we've seen many different attempts uh, around the world through you know, the Amazon-Google um, partnership, through many different governments, the Singaporean government, Chinese government, the Australian government, etc. And yet no certainty about success or certainty about the impact that it has on, on preventing or reducing transmission. You guys at Access Now have developed a number of do's and, and don'ts in, in, in regards to what governments and companies should really consider when developing these apps. Can you give us a few examples? Things that we would see as sort of green ticks, right? So one would be the issue of voluntariness, the issue of consent, explicitly asking um, the user for consent so that it would be opt-in and it would indicate the pathway also to withdraw that consent as well. What we would see as a do is to put a sunset clause on these apps. So you want to make sure that there's actually an end to this thing. But I guess the main sort of do that I would propose or that we propose at Access Now is in terms of having privacy, data protection and security by design. If you look at what's happening around the world, you have these contact tracing apps, but there's no data protection frameworks in place, which means there's no oversight body, which means there's not necessarily the legislative framework to actually support this technology being developed. If you have the centralization of data, as opposed to the mechanism happening on the individual's phone, you have a honeypot where all of that data can be uh, hacked. The don'ts are also just as equally as important because we want to make sure, for example, that the data that's collected is not repurposed or monetized. We also want to make sure that the data is not on-sold uh, to, to parties that can then use it for, for purposes beyond the pandemic. Do we know what will happen to these data sets after the COVID-19 emergency will finally be over? Are you concerned? I mean, I, I, I obviously sense concern in, in, in what you just said. We are definitely concerned, and I think part of that is because of this idea of both mission creep, right, and also technology creep as well, and the convergence of technologies. Access Now has been working on the issue of digital identity for some time, which is about your biometrics being warehoused by the state, essentially. So what happens when your geolocation of your health, of your, you as an individual, your health status, your immunity is connected uh, to your digital identity, which is connected to the algorithm, which is connected to your ability to access basic social services or get on a bus or travel or cross a border, etc. So I think the COVID app is, in a way is just the tip of the, of the iceberg. And it's not just how we're dealing with the pandemic now, it's what is actually going to happen with that data going forward. Have you seen examples of best practice, of government that literally got it, you know, the best possible way? and? Uh, and are there any consequences for governments that are doing it wrong? Every country that we've seen, whether it be South Korea, Hong Kong, Australia, 
China, the US have all got various problems. And I'm sorry not to be able to say like this country is best practice. Much of the, the frameworks that are being created, the technologies that are being created are not open source, which means it's very, very difficult to be able to actually look under the hood and see what's, you know, to test the promises that are being made by the state. The Google and Apple um, consortium is doing some things right because part of that is because Apple's DNA is about encryption, is about protection of user data. Um, and so that DNA is within the, the API and the app. But there's also multiple problems that are attached to that as well. It's proprietary, for, for instance. What can the ordinary citizen do, uh, even if they have to assess whether they want to join one of these schemes in countries where it's not compulsory, for example? It's good that you make that distinction because in, in many countries the idea of like voluntariness is not actually you know part of the system i think the voluntary nature means that there's things like terms of service that you can actually read and see what's at risk here and means you can say no like that we're concerned of course about the negative influences from not downloading the app like how the state may infer um, and that's going to be a problem i think that you know if there's a data protection authority that there's an opportunity to actually uh use that because that's what they do. They manage data within the, within the national borders. The contact tracing app is kind of, as I say, like the tip of the iceberg. And it's really important that we get this totally right because the consequences are generational. And when we think about that mission creep, the technology creep, we end up in a situation where what started off as a public health imperative becomes a human rights crisis um, that we can't control. Brad, thank you for these terrific insights. It's always a pleasure talking to you. Have a good rest of your evening in Australia. Thank you so much. Well, that's all for this time. Please keep an eye on my Twitter account at Anto Zapula and the Trust Conference Twitter account at TrustConf to see who's coming up next on the show. And do send us your questions. We want to hear from you. You can tweet at us or you can leave a comment on the video below. And since you are there, do subscribe to the Trust Conference YouTube channel. I hope you enjoy the conversation. See you next time.